This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business, and to do it all incredibly easily. So a little while ago, I did a video for Proko's YouTube channel, and you can find that video linked in the description below about cross-hatching for comics. In this video, I wanted to take that a little bit further and examine some of the ways that I use cross-hatching in a more advanced way. And despite the title, we'll actually be rendering a little less than I normally do because I really wanted to boil this down to the absolute essentials that I use to help make my forms flow together. All right, so I'm gonna start with some rendering on this form here. And the first thing that I really wanna talk about is where to start your line when you're when you're doing your rendering. The natural assumption is that the place you wanna start is right on the edge of that form and you render out from there. And this is fine, but it takes an incredible amount of control and concentration to really make every line work starting directly at that point. And so the way that I really work is I'll start well into my form. And then I'm not having to worry quite so much about where the beginning of my line is and being quite so neat with it. And I can work much more quickly when I kind of lost that line there and easily than trying to be perfectly on that line. And so that's the first trick that I really want to get across is just how much easier all of your rendering will be if you work this way. And from here, I want to get into some of the, the advanced techniques that really separate rendering from looking like this and maybe a little bit hairy and a little bit unprofessional to something that looks much more professional. I'm going to use the same shape. And what I want to do is I want to soften my form. So I'm going to soften out here and I'm going to soften out here. And so I'm going to start running along the form like this toward my fade. There's one here and now I want to come out this way. And so I'm going to do the same thing here. And you can see that right away has a much cleaner, much more effective look to it. And I highly recommend that you practice this. A good way to do it is to just draw a half moon shape, something like this. I guess it doesn't need to be quite so deep. And what we're going to do is we're going to fade out both sides of this. I'm going to start in the center. I'm starting my rendering well inside the form. And I'm going to fade out my shape. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I really recommend that you work on this shape right here as an exercise and do several of these until you can get a nice even fade like this. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some shapes together. And this is something like what I might do if I was drawing a rib cage or something along those lines. And I'm just going to start rendering the way that I see a lot of times and it is technically correct. Basically, the idea is if I have a tube and we have it in space and it's coming toward us like this, then all my rendering is going to follow along that form. And that's really the fundamental understanding that will make your rendering give your forms dimension. But that's not really enough. And so I'm going to render this the way that I see done quite a bit. And my forms are all going to render basically around like this. And I'm just going through, I'm making sure all my sizing is consistent, my spacing is consistent, and I'm following the form. And so this is fine. This is really following the rules, but the effect that I'm getting is ultimately something that looks fairly hairy. And it's incredibly easy to fall into this trap. And you can see this is really not the look that you want to get, but it's a very difficult thing to know why this happened and exactly how you can fix it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and draw the same shapes again. And I want to make sure that these underlying shapes are fairly clean because I don't want it to confuse what we're doing with the rendering. So I've got the same shapes drawn again, and now I'm going to approach it much more in the way that I approach this right here. And you'll see the difference. So I'm starting well within my form, starting very, very small, and then I'm going to fade out this edge. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now I'm going to do the same thing here rendering along the entire form, but very small. And I'm starting to angle out toward the edge that I want to fade. And I'm fading out that edge just like that. And now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to angle my paper because it's starting to get into an angle where it's difficult for me to draw a line. I'm going to fade out toward this edge. And now I'm going to do this last one here. And I have just about the same amount of rendering, but you can see this here 
really reads like it, it flows and it gives it a lot of air and it feels like it's giving it a fade that feels very pleasing to the eye as opposed to this, which can really start to flatten a picture and make it look overwrought. So now that we have that established, I want to show you a few places where you can put it together and shapes don't always work in exactly this way. Before we jump into the rest of the video, I wanted to take a minute to talk about Squarespace and show you some of the progress I've made redesigning my own website. I've got my basic look together and put in a gallery of my YouTube videos and a portfolio of my work. And now I really wanted to focus on commerce. And so I set up a section with merch and I put up a new t-shirt. I put it in a section with my courses, my in-depth lessons and my resources. And I started going in and dropping in all my content. From there, it's just a matter of setting up commerce with Squarespace. It's all simply laid out and easy to understand. You can sell physical goods, digital goods, which I'm selling or services, you can take a one-time fee or set up subscriptions with a membership plan. And finally, Squarespace makes it easy for you and your customers by giving you the option of multiple ways to automatically set up payment. There is no easier way for you to start making money from your artwork all in one convenient place so it's easy to set up and easy for your customers to know where to find you. If you're ready to give Squarespace a try and jumpstart your art career, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash David Finch to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code David Finch. All right, let's get back to the video. So I'm gonna draw a lower arm here. So there's my arm. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this in and put some shadowing on it, and then we'll go ahead and start rendering. And you can see this first shape I have is very similar to that shape there. I've got another shape connecting just in here bit of a bone protrusion here. And I'm ending up with something very similar to what I had here. My elbow. So you can see already that I've got some shapes that are a little bit more complex. I've got this shape here that's a bit more of a bowl shape. I've got these shapes here, which are much more similar to this kind of a shape here. And then I've got this shape, which is this shape right here but I've actually drawn an extra line and so I'm completing that shape and coming down to a hard shadow. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start with what we understand from here first and from here. And I've got this line here fading out. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm angling my lines downward across and I'm gonna fade that just like that. And now I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna fade that one out too. I'm gonna fade this one up and around here. And now I wanna fade this, I'm gonna match it. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna make sure these are fairly consistent. And you can see I actually went a little bit heavier on the other side and I'm drawing the other side because I've got essentially this bull shape, but I'm using rendering that goes crossways. And now what I can do is I can draw what I did here and I'm just using that same concept just like that, just to finish that out at the bottom. Now, with this shape here, I'm gonna end up with something that's much more similar to this too, or really a more flattened version of this, or really all the same. And so I'm gonna come up just along here, just like that, and along the bottom, I'm just gonna soften just a little bit like that. It's really all you need. I can render all the way through, but all I need is to just soften what I really want soft. And this is how you can render much more cleanly and simply and get something that has a, a lot of nice flow. And you can get more complex from here and start adding a lot of cross hatching, but I think it's really important to get comfortable with this before you go ahead and start doing that, if that's the way that you want to go. And so just a little bit more here, I'm gonna fade this out. And you can see that really fades that out into, into the rest of the rendering. I'm following basically the same line down. I'm fading this off and just softening it. I can also come in and soften this just up here too, just like this. And so there's my arm rendered. All I'm doing, I'm not rendering toward the light and I'm not just rendering directly across the form. I'm trying to render toward the fade. I'm gonna do the same arm again and we're gonna do it the wrong way, the way that you'll be more inclined to do it if you're not thinking in these terms and show you why it's so easy to end up with rendering that can get very stiff, clunky and overbearing. So here we go, we've got the same basic structure, certainly close enough. And I'm gonna bear in mind that my rendering, my form is basically directly across from us so it would just be like this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start rendering that way.
And so there I go. Now I tried to be very careful to make sure that all my rendering is nice and consistent, evenly sized. I've even created some nice fades. I've got a fade coming through here, but I went directly across along the form and I stayed relatively even length with all of my rendering all the way down the form. You can see that while it technically works, it really looks very, very stiff. And this is something that I see all the time. And it's a very difficult thing to diagnose when you're really not aware of rendering a long form in order to get these kinds of fades. It's a very simple thing, but it can be very difficult to pick this up on your own and really understand why this works and why this doesn't when this is really technically correct. So I wanna show you some work from a time when I was really narrowing down my rendering to its basic minimums. And I wanna show you some of the techniques that I was using to make that really work without being either useless or overbearing. And I'm calling this video advanced rendering techniques, but it's actually really very simple. And you'll notice that I'm really not using, aside from this tiny little bit here, any cross hatching, it's all just single Single line rendering to soften forms and it really is the difference between fading out toward your fades versus rendering all the way through just along the form which is really the way that I've been describing it so far and I feel like I've been doing a bit of a disservice. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business and to do it all incredibly easily. So I'm remaking my own website with Squarespace right now. When you jump into the Squarespace website, right at the top it will show you an option for templates, which I love because it's a huge head start right out of the gate. I started by putting my logo right at the top, changing some of the text, putting in an image. All I had to do is just click on the image, upload my own and size it in their own software and it's ready to go. That literally took me a couple of minutes to do and I had never used it before. I decided I want to put a gallery into my site so I started with just a simple template for that. It came with some pictures already included and, and dropping in my own could not have been easier. I fought last year with my website trying to get images sized correctly so they work properly in a gallery. This one automatically sizes them. You don't have to think about it at all. It is really incredible. The website builder has a menu that will give you all the options you could possibly need for a site. I put in a video gallery with some highlights from my YouTube channel and I integrated it with my Instagram. And within minutes, I have a site that has almost all of the content that I spent two months fighting to get last year. I cannot tell you how much I wish I would have found this a year ago. I felt like I needed to be a programmer to put my website together. It was an absolute nightmare. So I implore you to go check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash David Finch to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code David Finch. All right, let's jump back into the lesson. And so now that we've got that, I've got a figure that I've drawn in here. This is my own character and I've drawn everything just with shadow shape. There's no rendering on this picture at all. I've gotten a little bit close to what could be considered rendering in here. These are all just smaller shapes, but really so much of my rendering really is just defining smaller shapes. But for the most part, it's all the kinds of shapes that we were dealing with earlier. This shape in here is really just this right here and all these shapes in the arms really correlate to what we were doing earlier on with our other picture. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to render this picture and really put what we were doing into practice. And so coming out of here, I don't want to render this whole area. I don't want it to be too overbearing, but what I do want to do is fade this out toward the top. And I've got this leg. I'm wanting it to angle just about like this. And so I'm going to curve my rendering this way as opposed to this way, but I'm going to bring it up and fade that out. And so let me just go ahead and do that. That's all there is to it. Very, very simple and subtle. Now at the bottom here, I've actually got a bit of a bowl shape and that's something like what we did here earlier on. And so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna continue along the same path I'm gonna fade it just like that. If this didn't end in a hard shadow at the bottom here, I would have rendered it out downward this way. But because I'm coming back up, I want to render up along the fade this way. And so now I'm gonna render this along the fade here. Very, very simple. Maybe just a little bit here. Fade that out. Just a little here. It really doesn't need much. And as a matter of fact, I could actually leave, and I think maybe I should, all of those sorts of shapes just completely alone. I want to connect this though. And so now I am actually gonna use this directionality. And I've already got my fade kind of established. And so I can just go along that. And that'll really work for cross hatching because I already have a good fade established below that. And so I'm gonna do the same thing here. I wanna fade this to where it gets softer here. And then I'll just bring it up to nothing right there, just like that. This right here is a similar kind of a bowl shape. I'm gonna render up out of that, just like that. And now this is going to fade out down toward it. So I wanna fade just like this. I'm gonna fade this too. It's a little bit here. I'm gonna fade this out 
So as I fade, my rendering gets a little bit longer. Here are two. And now I've got a cut through here. I've got a bit of a, a fold that's coming through. So I'm just gonna render just along, just like this, just to soften that a little bit. And I can come up just to finish that. And now I've got another bowl shape here. I'm gonna come up along this and soften inside that. I'm just gonna go through all of these, and soften out but I don't want to end up with something like this where I'm evenly heavily rendering all the way across these forms. And so same thing here, just very, very little. And I'm starting well into my dark shape there. That's really all I need. And I can actually extend that out just like this. I can do the same thing here and just soften those. Soften this last one here. It needs very little, but that's a really work. I'm gonna do the edge of this form here. The form is wrapping this way. I want this to fade though. And so I'm gonna angle down toward the fade, just like that. And with just that, I've got this whole area really rendered as much as I need it. Anything more that I do there is just extra. This is really the essentials for getting this kind of a rendered look and getting something that gives you the nice flow that you're looking for. And really, it's a debate that I've had with myself over the years, whether this is something that I should stick with or whether I wanna keep rendering much more heavily like I tend to do now. And just to show you, this really represents the basis for my rendering. However I render, no, no matter how much I put in, if I wanna put more here, then what I'll do is I will come up along the form like this and go crossways and do a fade like that. And that'll give it a little bit more, but you can see it's really not necessary to make this work. I'm gonna go ahead and fade this here, just like this, fade this, and I'm fading out this way just a little bit, coming up and angling it toward this fade up here. And there it is. And now I'm gonna do the same thing here and angle it up toward that fade there. And just a little bit here, it really doesn't need much at all. I can really, for the most part, leave this whole area very open. A little here. And I don't want to obliterate my forms with rendering. It's just gonna fade out like that. And so I'm just trying to make sure that it accentuates what I have, overpowering it. I'm gonna fade this this way, and this this way, and these should really match. Now on the other side, and my pencils tend to be a little bit loose and you can see where there's a little confusion here and there in terms of what my line is and what's construction line underneath it. And this is why inking is really such a difficult job and it doesn't get the credit that it deserves. Fading that out just like this. And I'm gonna leave this whole area there. I don't think that really needs anything. And so now I wanna come up along here. It's a harder surface. And so I want to go very, very short here and I am actually rendering all the way along this. And now I'm gonna go along the other side and just little dots and that really raises it up and you can see that gives it quite a bit of dimension. And this really is a very different kind of a rule than what we were working on earlier. But I wanna show you that this is something that I still do use. And I can fade this back just by using a flat line. And here I'm gonna use the same flat line but I'm gonna break it up as it rounds around toward the light. Now I've got a bit of a bowl here again. It really is just this again. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to start to render through, angle up toward the fade here, and a vein there, so I wanna break there and then finish that right here, then fade that here. And now I'm gonna soften this just a little bit here. I'm gonna do what I did here on this vein. Again, it's a very long, thin shape. And so I'm just going very, very small here, very short drawing little balls really along the surface and then I can do the same thing along the other edge and it really raises that up. And now I want to soften this. This is all very large form. I don't need to. I could leave it just like this but I'm going to go crossways along the form here and I've got my form basically like this. This is kind of what I'm thinking in terms of directionality and so I'm going to start fairly small and go all along the form like this leaving a break for that vein and just soften it a little bit more. And I've come this way, and so I want to, on the other side, match it here, just to finish it. It's like that. Shadow some of this in just a little bit more, just using a flat line. I'm gonna fade this out down toward, it. and it, because of the way that I've got these little folds and shapes here, it's actually gonna flow nicely into it, but I'm also fading the shape out downward. And so I'm just gonna come along here, 
and soften down into that. Just like that, that's really all it needs. I'm gonna move into this arm here. I wanna fade this up here. So let me just give that just a little bit of a fade here, just like that. And a little bit more here. And I've got a shadow along the other side here. I'm gonna give that just a little bit of fade. That. I'm gonna come up along here. Just finish that shape. Now we can create a little fade there too. And you can see that really finishes that whole area with very, very little. Now I want this area to be a little darker underneath my vein here. So I'm gonna go along the form with that. When I really want the whole area, now I'm gonna work on his face. This is getting into a bit more detail, but I wanna soften this lip here this way. And so I'm just gonna finish it out like that underneath here. Soften this form here, just like this. I'm gonna go very short. And then I want this to finish out this way. And so I'm going to start angling very heavily that way, just like that. Give his lips some texture with this rendering here, crossways. Now I'm doing the same thing with his brow. I really could leave all of this alone entirely. And I think I, for the most part, I will I'll just soften it just slightly. I'm going to come along the form here, soften that down this way. And this is really just giving it a little texture. And I've got this shape here that I want to soften upward just like that. And you can see when I press too hard, I end up with something that's much, much darker. And I have at times actually gone ahead and just dabbed it with my kneaded eraser to solve that. Soften some of these around. And this is just following the form. Not really softening into a fade with this. That's just really rounding around the form. And same thing here. Let me just clean this up a little bit here so it's a little more clear. So now I've got his lower cape here and I've got a bit of a fold coming out here and the whole thing rounds just about like this. So what I wanna do is fade this little fold here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna match it and keep this nice and airy around the entire thing, just to give it a little texture. On this side, I've got some shapes that I kinda of wanna fade and so I'm gonna Fade this one upward here like this. And this one. That's really all that it needs. Some of this is, is gonna be a little bit more obscured so I can go a little darker here and use this rendering more like I did here just to round the overall form. Do the same thing here. This is just darkening that whole area. And so I've got another fold defined up this way, and I'm sure by now you know exactly how I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna start here, rounding around the form and following my form, and then I'm just gonna start angling up toward my fade and establish that fade in there. And I can do the same thing on the other side, down this shape here. And I'm gonna round this shape just with some very broad kind of lines. These lines here aren't really meant to soften form so much as describe form and give you some texture. Do the same thing here. These are just really texture. Very, very simple though. Here I'm rounding around and softening that form there. I've got a bit of a fold here that's gonna come up and so I'm gonna soften that one up into it. Make sure that I'm decently defined so I can see what I'm doing. And I've got another one here. And that's really all I need to give me that illusion of a nice organic flowing cape. So what we're left with now are his boots and some of the detail in his armor. And all I need is just a little bit. I've got a, a rounded, softer shape here, which I've got partly defined. And so I'm gonna do the same thing I did with, with veins earlier on and just draw a very, sh uh, very short, blunt line along here. And then define the other side of it just like that. And that really describes that shape very nicely. I'm going to do the same thing here. This I want to be underneath, so I'm going to make this whole thing dark and I'm just going to fade it using these kinds of lines here. And push it into the background. And now for these lines here, I can go a little blunt here and just kind of define that edge again. I'm going to do this here and fade this side. And now I'm just going to do what I did here and just give it some texture. And I've got a bit of a shadow in here that I can go ahead and fade upward, just like this. And for the rest of this, I'm just gonna go ahead and just use some rendering more like texture. Soften that edge here, just 
just a little bit. It's not quite as sharp. And I want this to fade back. And so as I go further down, I'm gonna go a little bit heavier with the lines here. And I'm just a little bit thicker here, stopping at the edge here to give that edge some light. And a little thicker here, and I'm creating a fade all the way down that leg. Very, very simple. And this will just go dark. And so that's really all I need. This figure is completely rendered. It really took me very, very little time and it's using a few very simple techniques. So I hope this helps you render your own work, maybe more sparingly, but with much greater effect. In another video, we'll take what we've done here and we'll add far more rendering to it and build it in layers and try to make it all work without overpowering the figure. Something that, as you can see, is very easy to do, even just with one pass of rendering if it's done inappropriately. The more comfortable you are creating fades and just softening with your rendering, the easier it will be for you to use it strategically in your own artwork. All right, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to tune in every Monday night at 8 o'clock Eastern for Monday Night Draw with Meredith and Dave, and I will see you in the next video.